There are many different ways to change down the gears when you're driving a car with a manual gearbox. And in this video, I'm gonna try and show you as many different methods that I can think of with their advantages and disadvantages. When changing down a gear in a manual car, there are two things you always need to do. Number one is you need to press the clutch down to move the gear stick. Now I know there is a way to change gear without using the clutch, but I don't recommend it because it can be damaging. Although I'll probably show you how to do this later. The other thing you've got to do is bring the revs up. Lower gears need higher revs. At the moment, I'm in third gear, as you can see here, it's sometimes asking me to go to fourth, but I'm gonna stay in third. And I'm doing around about 2000 RPM, just under 2000 RPM. When I go to second gear, which is a lower gear than third, the revs are gonna to need to be higher if I want it to be smooth. So, clutch down to move the gear stick. I'm gonna bring the revs up and then lift the clutch up so it's smooth. I can either use the gas to bring the revs up or the clutch. If you don't give your revs a chance to rise with either the gas or the clutch when changing down a gear, then your downshift is gonna be very jerky. The first method I'm gonna show you is the most basic method and probably the method you are taught when learning to drive. It may be a little bit jerky because the clutch isn't gonna have enough time to bring the revs up to exactly where they need to be. I'm in third gear doing around about 30 miles an hour and I want to go down to second. I'm gonna push the clutch down, move the gear stick to gear two and bring the clutch up slowly. So here we go. So off the gas, clutch down into second, bring the clutch up slowly. There's a little bit of a kick there. It worked, it wasn't really bad, but it could be a lot smoother. The reason why it wasn't smooth is because the clutch didn't have enough time to finish bringing the revs up to exactly where they needed to be. The advantages of that method is that it's easy and you can brake as you're changing down the gears. The disadvantage is, well, it's not the smoothest. The next method is a lot smoother, but it's a little bit more tricky and requires more skill. I'm now gonna do the exact same thing, but instead of coming off the clutch slowly, forcing the revs to go up quickly, which causes the car to jerk, I'm gonna hold the clutch at the bite point to allow the revs to rise more slowly. That will make the gear shift smoother. So, off the gas, I'm in third, clutch down into second gear, bring the clutch up until the revs start rising, then hold it. So, bring the clutch up, revs are rising, hold it, hold it. Now the revs have finished rising, I can come fully off the clutch. That's the gear change complete. It was smooth, there was no jerk at all. All that happened was the car slowed down smoothly. If you want to use your clutch to bring the revs up and you want it to be smooth, you need to hold the clutch at the bite point. If you come off the clutch quickly, it's gonna be very jerky. If you come off the clutch slowly, it may be jerky, it may be smooth, it depends how slowly you come off the clutch and it's a little bit of luck. Whereas if you hold the clutch at the bite point, you can be sure to let the clutch do its job and put the revs where they need to be. You know the clutch is at the bite point because the revs start rising. That's when you hold the clutch steady. Once the revs have finished rising, the clutch has finished its job and you can come fully off the pedal. Now, many people will say that you're riding the clutch or burning the clutch out if you do this, if you hold the clutch at the bite point for any period of time. But the clutch is designed to do this. This is the clutch's job to put the revs where they need to be. And you could argue when you ask the clutch to do it more slowly, it actually causes less wear. Because when you ask the clutch to do the same amount of work in a shorter period of time, it generates more heat and clutches wear when they get hot. It's just like slowing down from 60 miles per hour. You can brake hard, doesn't take as long, but you cause more wear to the brakes because you're making the brakes hotter so they wear quicker than if you slow down gently from 60 miles per hour. I have a video all about riding the clutch. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to it up there in the top right hand corner of your screen. I want to go from third to second gear again, but this time, instead of using the clutch to bring the revs up, I'm gonna use the gas pedal. I'm gonna hold my foot on the gas pedal as I change gear to allow the revs to rise. That means the clutch doesn't have to do so much work. So, clutch down whilst holding the gas on, down to second, bring the clutch up, and there we go. The clutch had very little work to do, therefore, I didn't need to hold the clutch at the bite point. This was smooth, and it's usually a quicker way of changing down the gear, but also, more importantly, you don't slow down as you change down the gear. This is handy if you wanna go down a gear to prepare for an overtake. 
This method is much like the previous method. I'm gonna use the gas pedal to bring the revs up to where they need to be. But instead of holding the gas gently, I'm gonna blip the throttle to bring them up suddenly. I'm in third, I'm gonna go down the second. So off the gas, clutch down into second, blip the throttle, and then off the clutch. Very similar to the previous method, just a different way of bringing the revs up. Whether you choose to hold the gas pedal gently to bring the revs up or blip the gas suddenly to bring it up, well, that's up to you. It depends what you find easier. I usually find it easier to give the pedal a good hard blip because sometimes if I try and hold the gas pedal steady, I can hold it too much or too little, but I've kind of got used to and got skilled at blipping the throttle to get it roughly where I need to be. But it depends on the car I'm driving as well. Some cars it's easier to blip, some cars it's easier to hold, and it's down to the individual. The main disadvantage of this method though is that you can't brake whilst changing down the gear because you're too busy pressing the gas pedal. Or can you? There is a way to change down the gears whilst braking and using the gas pedal. It's known as heel and toe, although you don't use your heel and your toe, you kind of use one half of your foot on the brake and the other half on the gas. I'll demonstrate that now. So I'm braking, I'm gonna go down into third, flip the gas with the side of my foot so I can lift the clutch. I'm gonna go down to second, flip the gas with the side of my foot so I can lift the clutch again. It's not easy. I don't recommend it for beginners. I started doing it after about two years of driving. I've been driving around about 18 years now, so I've been doing it 16 years and I still get it wrong. So I don't recommend it as a beginner, but as a more advanced driver, it can be a useful way of changing down the gears quickly and smoothly whilst braking. If you're interested in the method, I have a video all about it. I'll leave a link to it in the top right hand corner of your screen. Bear in mind you don't have to rev the engine when going down the gears. As a beginner, just use the brake, go down the gears with the clutch and use the clutch to rev match. Rev matching is more for the driving enthusiast who wants to get the most they can out of their car. There is another way of changing down the gears. It's known as double declutching. In fact, you can use it for changing up gears and down gears, but this video is all about changing down the gears. It's not necessary in any car post 1970s, Certainly cars pre-1960s, you needed to do it. In the 60s seemed to be the crossover period where the technology, the gearbox technology started to improve and you no longer needed to do it. Essentially, your gearbox have synchronizers in them and it synchronizes each gear. So when you change the gear, it lines them up so you don't have to do it, the gearbox does it. If you have a modern car where the synchronizers are failing, you have to do it. I've not owned a car where I've had to do it, so I'm not very skilled at this because I've never had to do it. The oldest car I've driven is a 1984 Opel Cadet, which is like a Vauxhall Astra, and the oldest car I've owned actually was a Vauxhall Astra as well. I only just put them two together. That was a 1992 Vauxhall Astra. That was my first car. How you do it? Well, if you're still following me, <laughs> push the clutch down, put it into neutral, come off the clutch, then you blip the throttle exactly how much you need to be to rev match the gears. Mm -hmm. Take skill. Then clutch down, then put it into that lower gear. Then before coming off the clutch, if you want the smoothest of gear changes, rev the car again so that you're rev matching the clutch as I've just explained in the last few gear changes and then you can come off the clutch. So you're having to rev match the clutch and you're having to rev match the gears. That's not something I'm used to having to do. If you're still with me and I haven't scared you away from all this complication, I'm gonna show you how to downshift using the double D clutching method. Firstly, I'm gonna do it slowly so you can see what I'm doing, although it won't work very well when you do it slow because the revs will keep dropping too low. And then I'll do it quickly. I'm in third gear, I wanna go to second. So what I do, so I come off the gas, clutch down into neutral, clutch up. Then I'll blip the throttle like that to get the gears at the correct speed. So blip the throttle, then clutch down into second gear. Then I'll blip the throttle again, so I'm rev matching the clutch. Didn't do a very good job there because I'm doing it all a bit too slowly trying to explain what I'm doing. I'm gonna go back to third gear and do it more quickly this time. So I'm in third gear, going to go down to second, into neutral, blip the throttle, blip the throttle again before I lift the clutch. See, that was actually very smooth. I can't say what I'm doing as I do it there because there's too much happening. I'll try and do it again. So basically what I'm doing is I'm putting it into neutral, coming off the clutch, blipping the throttle, clutch down into the lower gear, second gear, then blipping the throttle to be able to bring the clutch up smoothly. I'll try that again. 
So neutral, blip the throttle, clutch down, take and rip the throttle again, lift the clutch. There we go. That was smooth. I don't know if I'm doing it right or wrong because this gearbox works absolutely fine. And it's only if there was a problem with the gearbox would I know if I was getting it wrong. To be fair, I could have got away with pressing the gas once if I brought the clutch up more quickly after changing down into second gear, but I can't do it quick enough. By the time I do the gear change, the revs have dropped and bringing the clutch up would be jerky unless I gave another blip of the throttle. You don't need to do this though. You don't need to double D clutch in a modern car because the gearbox is set up, so you don't need to do it. Some people would argue that it makes the gears last longer, but this car has over 187,000 miles on it, not motorway miles, learner miles, hard miles on the original gearbox and it's fine. Fair enough, there may be some cars out there with weaker gearboxes where there's a known problem where the synchronizer fails more easily and you may want to baby it a bit more, but generally speaking, it's not needed. There is a way to change gear without using the clutch though. I don't recommend it. It can damage your gearbox, but what you do is you knock it out of gear. To knock it out of gear, what you do is you come off the gas and then knock it out. Because as you come off the gas, there's less power going through the gears, hopefully no power, and it will go out of gear more easily. And then let's say you wanna go down into second gear from third, and you know you need around about 3,000 revs. So to do this method, you need to know how many revs you need for the lower gear for it to work. So you think, oh, I'm gonna need around about 3,000 revs for that lower gear. Go for about 3,500 revs, always go a bit too much. And then come off the gas and push it quick into gear. Hopefully it goes in. If not, well, it either won't let it in or it will grind the gears, which damages your gearbox. This is how you change down the gears without using the clutch. I'm gonna come off the gas, put it into neutral, and then I'll rev the engine to 500 more than they need to be for the lower gear. So I'm in third at 25 miles an hour. Where do the revs need to be for second? Well, let's see, I'm gonna put it into second and bring the clutch up. There you go, the revs need to be at 2,500 RPM. So I'm gonna go and rev up to about 3,000 before I try and push it into second. So I'll go back to third now, stay at the same speed. So I'll come off the gas, put it to neutral, rev the engine to 500 more than it needs to be, that's 3,000 RPM, then quickly put it into gear. So here we go. So off the gas, into neutral, rev the engine to just around our three, then put it in, there you go, in. Didn't grind the gears and it went in. Actually quite relieved there because you can damage your gearbox doing it that way. I'll go up a gear now without using the clutch. This time when you go up a gear, the revs drop and they're not gonna drop by much more than 500, so I'm gonna to have to push it into third pretty much straight away. So off gas, into neutral, then into third. There, got it there, nearly grinded it there. I think I pushed it in a little bit too early. It didn't quite wanna go in. Anyway, I'm gonna stop doing that now because, well, I don't wanna damage my gearbox. Getting near the end of the video now, and I thought I'd just give you a couple of tips. One is to help you understand if you're giving too much gas or too little gas when you're trying to rev match the downshifts using the gas pedal. If you give too much gas when you go down a gear, you're gonna be jotted back in your seat like this. Oh, that, uh, really didn't wanna do that. I'm sacrificing my car in the, well, in the pursuit of helping you get better at driving. I'm gonna go up to third gear again. Uh, this time, I'm not gonna give enough gas and then come off the clutch. That means I'll be jolted forwards in the seat. So I'm gonna go down to second, barely any gas at all. Oh yeah, that's not very nice. I got jolted forward quite harshly there. Also because I'm coming off the clutch very quickly, but if you rev match the gas well, um, you should be able to come off the clutch quite nicely. I'll go back up to third again. If I give the Goldilocks zone the right amount of gas, I should be able to come off the gas, not the gas, I should be able to come off the clutch quickly and it will be smooth. So this time, if I get it right, if I get just the right amount of gas, it will be smooth. That's how you know if you're giving too much gas during your rev match or too little, or it's just right. It's how smooth it is and whether you get jolted forwards or backwards. So down to second, just the right amount of gas. And yeah, that was a lot smoother. So too much gas, you get jolted back in your seat and too little gas, you get jolted forwards. Get it just right and it should be smooth. And my last bit of advice for going down the gears is not to go down to first gear. First gear is for starting. So I'm gonna slow down 
and I'm going to go down the gears. I'm not going to use the rev matching method this time. I'm just going to use the easier method of holding the clutch at the bite point to let the clutch do the rev matching so it's smooth. I'm in second now and I'm not going to go down to first. I'm not going to do that in first because there's a big jump between second and first. When I get too slow for second, I'll put the clutch down and continue to brake. If I'm above about five miles now, I won't bother with second. Just put a gas, lift the clutch at the bite point, hold it there for a couple of moments and then come off and carry on in second. It's a lot easier. First gear is really for starting from a near standstill, near five miles an hour. You certainly don't want to use it for engine braking to help you slow down because it's too harsh. So this time in second gear, I'm slowing down, I'm getting slower, I'm getting to the point where the clutch needs to be down now, around about 1,000 RPM, so clutch down. And this time I'm gonna to get to a near standstill and now I'll select first. I'm not using it to help me slow down, just using it to get me going like that and then back up the second again. If you're not a driving enthusiast and just wanna drive your car smoothly, easily and safely, I recommend using the clutch to rev match. You don't need to use the other methods. You can get perfectly smooth enough using the clutch. You won't be the quickest round of race circuit, but then that's probably not your goal. You may have heard that if you're not double D clutching, you're granny shifting. That's a popular quote from an old video I used to love as a youngster, film, Fast and the Furious. But that's not really true. That's not true at all. If you're pressing the clutch twice during a gear change, you're taking longer to change gears, so therefore you're slower. If you're pressing the clutch once, you're quicker. If you're not pressing the clutch at all and you have a sequential gearbox and you can just pull a lever, then you're even faster. So yeah, that is a popular quote and I think it does confuse people quite a bit. If you think the video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, check out the links to Conningwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Collingwood are there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy and that takes away a big stress from the owner of the car. Via the link there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car I recommend checking out the link to confuse.com. You fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back from many insurers to compare who's cheapest and you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like to see how much it costs to insure different cars which is useful when you're trying to compare how much it costs to insure cars when you're thinking about which one to buy. Using the links doesn't cost you anything but it does support the channel so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos and until the next one, cheerio!